This is the drive home with Zach and TT for the Millwall drive home, driving home from the den where it finished Millwall nil, Luton Town two. <laughs> from the highs of two wins back to back, to be fair, one nil wins they were, to the lows of today, and it was a very disappointing performance all round the park. Out fault. You know, I put that as the um, the title. We were out fault and uh, I think it was outworked. I've actually put, but out fault and outworked. And a Luton Town, a very professional side, committing a number of fouls and then taking their chances. They created three chances all game and took two of them, and the other one hit the bar. And when you're clinical in the championship, you get the three points, and that's exactly what Luton Town had done today. You know, we had we had the last the last ten minutes where um, we looked like we were going to come back into it, but we did we we did we didn't really deserve it. A lot, like I said, it was the last ten minutes that we looked like we could potentially get anything. But other than that, we started. Put please put your comments in below. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of talk about Gary Rowett out, which normally happens after a defeat, and it's difficult to take. It's hard to argue against it when you play so negatively. You create very few chances. Um, especially in a home game against the, you know, a decent championship side, but they're Luton Town are probably not going to get promoted. They we probably can, finish mid-table. We can definitely beat them, definitely. Oh, well, we should, we should, we should be looking to beat teams like that. And 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 we, like I said, we we looked pretty aimless. So put your comments in below. We started with five at the back again. Um, Bartosz Bielikowski in goal, a back three of Sean Hutchinson, Jake Cooper, and. Daniel Ballard, right wing back was Danny McNamara, left wing back was Murray Wallace. We had the two midfielders in George Savile and George Evans, and then the front three of Shea Yojo on the left, Jed Wallace on the right, and Benica Fobe up front. Too many bad performances, to be honest, individually. And before we go into the chances created, it's so, so frustrating that, you know, we've got two midfielders, we're being outnumbered in midfield. Uh, but the two midfielders that we had today just they don't seem to want the ball in the middle of the park and I don't know whether that's something they're being told but you've got to want to get on the ball and, and we just so often do not that and is where we lack Keftenbeld and uh, well, Leonard Billy, in the yeah, set but, yeah Billy Mitchell Billy, as well Billy, yeah. Billy Mitchell comes on and, and has far more of the ball and I know the game's stretched and it's a different game at that stage but Billy Mitchell shows for the ball in the midfield and he's yeah. actually in the middle yeah and he's and he's putting the little passes like sprouting <laughs> the play out, out wide and then we, we put a beautiful cross in but we, we just put so, beautiful crosses in yeah far far too often the ball you know there's no option in the midfield so the ball has to go direct and long and we've got a phobie at front for the for the first 60 minutes there's no Smith that's, that's not where he needs the ball it's not where he wants the ball the ball's got to be played you know into feet into the channels and you know we just weren't doing that and that, if you don't do that you're going to lose the ball and we just turned possession over far too often I would say that when we did get it wide ironically the ball's into the box although they were floaty they're actually pretty decent but then you've got no Matt Smith in the box and so you're relying on it being absolute pinpoint accuracy on someone's head and that although there were good books uh, good balls into good areas like they weren't good enough Luton took the lead with well their, their their only chance of the first half poor defending we give the ball away I think it was um, Hutchin it was Cooper played a, yeah. like a silly ball to Hutch that was it wasn't Hutchinson's fault it was quite far away from him Hutchinson comes back, makes a lovely tackle. It deflects off of him, then on, then onto their player, deflects out wide, and then their number seven. Yeah, Cornick puts... is a brilliant finish into the top oh. right-hand corner. Like I said, Cornick had two chances today and took them really well. Mm. But the, the defence gets pulled too far over, and you've got back five. There should be someone at the far post. Maybe Danny Max not in there because he, you know we, we've got caught on the on the transition. That puts them one nil up. We kind of huffed and puffed after that in the first half, but never really created anything, to be fair. Um, like I said, balls into the box. And what the, the Luton done well, to be fair, is any corners that we had, they were all over Cooper. Rugby, you know, the player that was marking Cooper, and I was watching him a few times, didn't, didn't concentrate on the ball at all. Literally, his job was to grab 
uh, Jake Cooper at every given opportunity. And if you're going to get away with it, then then you're going to do it. And that's, like I said, it's up to the ref to even have a little word. But what I don't understand is Mill players need to go up to the ref and say, look, this is happening. Keep an eye on it. And, and, and because... When they didn't do that, it, when there was no fouls with the ball and when Smith come up in the second half, we actually got on the end of it. So you've, you've got to put a little bit of... You, you don't even have to put pressure on the ref, but you've got to make him aware of what's going on. But they, they just didn't. And the ref was happy for it to happy for it to continue. Um, half-time come and went. And then, you know, obviously we conceded the second goal. Not really on the break, but again, it was a love... It, a bit of play by them in the, in the midfield on the transition it's, 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 a, it's a through ball right between the two centre backs two of the three centre backs to um, Cormick, uh, Cornick again who's on the right side and then just lovely you know Bart's kind of he, a little bit a, out of position he's a good player Cornick yeah he is um, takes too long for throw-ins and it literally took him 35, 40 seconds every time he, uh, he went to take a throw-in. But, but that's the same with Slugger, their keeper. He yeah. moved like a Slugger when he tried to get the ball. Yeah, but they're trying to hold on to the game and so, like I said, it's up to the ref to manage it. It's certainly, you know, when we go away from home, that's what, what referees do, but they didn't seem to do it in this game. Um, but Cornick, yeah, put up, tucks them away and it's 2-0 to them. Then we make, like I said, some absolutely baffling, baffling subs. Danny McNamara comes off um, and Smith goes on, so we, we've changed the formation to again. I, I wasn't sure we've changed. We changed the formation so many times in the second half. There just seemed to be no fluidity, no um, kind of. And this is where the Gary Rowett knockers really do come to come to their own because mm. it, it seemed nonsensical at yeah. what we were doing. And the fact that we brought Smith on for one of our best players at the time, I just thought I was <coughs> blown away. Yeah. I, and so was I. Um, we made four subs, I, I think, because Murray Wallace had a head injury, so we were allowed to make a concussion sub. But it didn't really, you know, do anything. Yeah, it didn't really, di- didn't really do anything. Benekafobe d- couldn't really get on the ball today. It was certainly not his, certainly not his best game. Um, it's hard to, like I said, it's hard to rule out any any one specific player because so many of them didn't really play well. Um, Set. So, Obviously, we start to create a little bit as the game is spread and, and Luton are sitting deep. <coughs> it's where we get the penalty from. Actually, we got a free kick beforehand as well. Yeah, with the Jed Wallace one where, yeah, where the keeper makes a, a decent save. But he, he should save it. He's like 35 yards out. Jed Wallace has, takes a free kick and, and the keeper saves it to his left. It wasn't going into the top corner, but it, it was... was good enough to get past the keeper. Um, I don't know. He's so far out that you'd expect him to be saving that. Then... Like I said, from a corner, the ball goes into the box. It's the, the Luton player. I don't know why he's got his hands up in the air. There was, he like went, I said, like this. they're so concentrating on on not looking at the ball and and marking our players that the ball's coming to the box. They're all jostling. He's got his hand up in a silly position. It hits his hand. It's a it's a penalty. Up steps Jed, and Jed normally, you know, he normally tries to find the corners. Normally puts height on the ball, but this time he's he's driven it low, and I think it's it's not in the corner. And, and it summed up our, our performance today because, like I said, they Luton worked so hard in the first half that they were tiring as the game was going on. So if we'd have if we'd have taken you know taken a chance there, we we had a, a few a couple of more chances after that. And it, and like I said, it's really difficult to defend when you're sitting back like they were. And we don't take the chance there. And then to be fair, the next big chance came for Matt Smith. The ball from the right. Another good cross in. Smith gets up well, gets a decent head on it, put into the top. Well, it's going towards the top uh, right hand corner. The keeper makes a really good save. Mm. Uh, and I was, I was just saying that you want, um, you'd have been massively disappointed if you saved that, if, the, if, the, if it would have been 2 uh, 2 1 at that stage to make the equaliser. Overall, we did not do enough, and there's absolutely no getting around that. I thought that Daniel Ballard had a really good game. You know, he, he's shown his quality once again. Shay Yojo didn't really put, uh, perform. I, I liked Billy when he came on. Like I said, yeah. again, showing for the ball and, 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 and working and, and tiring. And you know, starting plays. Yeah, starting plays, but you know, chasing the ball down. And I, 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 I'm going to say like I'm moaning again, but I don't understand our press. So we we just don't, we sometimes let them come out and sometimes don't. But then there's such a gap that we leave in the middle of the park, which you know. 
good teams are gonna good teams are gonna make the most of. Did, did you have a man of the match? No, I didn't. I was pl- I was planning it while you were talking sometimes, and I was just thinking. Who's my man of the match? No one played well. Do you know I, what? I'm not giving out Jed's one. gonna get some stick for missing the penalty, but the, the life he. Yeah, he was probably our best player. He gets on the ball and drives with the ball, and like I said, Savile Savile had a poor game. Evans had a mm. poor game. Our, our central midfielders just just did not show for the ball enough, and and and, and you just cut, you cannot do that in the championship. Obviously, we've got Stoke, uh, we've got Sheffield United away on Tuesday night, which we can't go. It's a school night for him. There's no way I'd get him back on time, and I'll put four, um, I'm up at four for work, so we'll be back for the Stoke game on Saturday. It's going to be tough to raise it after that. And well, obviously, we've talked for a little while, but thank you very much for watching. If you've watched to the end, you've done well, but we stayed to the end, so we had to sit through that. So thank you very much for watching. One way we can finish it. No one likes us. We don't care.